So this is continuation of our discussion on complex integration. So far we introduced what is complex integration and then we defined the terminology contour because when we integrate a given uh, complex valued function in the complex plane then we integrate them on contours. So here is our precise problem. So we want to integrate a given complex valued function f of z along the contour c in the complex plane from point a to b. So this is the precise uh, statement of the problem that we want to solve. Now let's once again uh, go back and see how did we solve this problem for the case of real integrals. So if a real valued function f of x is given and we want to calculate uh, the area under the graph of a curve and above this uh, interval on the real axis. So we approximated this area first with rectangles and then we take the limit and approaches to infinity. So when the number of rectangles uh, increased to infinity then we get the exact area under the graph of f of x and above this interval a b. So the strategy is basically start point is basically we divide the interval into portions into equally distributed portions and then we derive this uh, notation of Riemann sum and then we take the limit and approaches to infinity and of course then we make sure that we get the same answer for each and every uh, partitioning. Okay, So uh, let's try to uh, adopt the same notation for the case of contours. Now let's try to follow the same steps in the case of uh, contours in the complex plane. So consider uh, this curve C in the complex plane starting point is uh, Z0 is equal to capital A and the end point is B let's say Zn. Now what do we want to do? So following uh, the case of real uh, integrals we want to divide this uh, path basically this path is analog of the intervals on the real axis and over there we divided the real interval so uh, following the footsteps of the real integral case we want to divide this curve into different portion so we divide them into z1 z2 zk minus 1 zk zn minus 1 up to zn and then over there we to find the length of the rectangle we chose the midpoint and over here we can choose let's say any random point in the interval so c1 is a point from z0 to z1, c2 is a point from z1 to z2, up to so on, ck is a point from zk minus 1 to zk, and cn is a point from zn minus 1 to zn. So that's the first stage where we divided this curve into different portions and we chose some points from each and every interval and named them to be c1, c2, ck up to cn. So that's the first step done. Now in the next step, we, uh, we obtain this. Okay, so so far we obtained this partition, and uh, in the next step we say that uh, delta z k is equal to z k minus z k minus one. Okay, and for k is equal to one to three up to n. Okay, and uh, in the next step we then introduce this Riemann sum. Okay, so exactly the same as we did for the real case. So this is uh, the functional value at each and every c one c two up to c k. And we are multiplying this functional value with zk minus zk minus 1. And uh, since we are calling it delta zk, so we can just replace this with delta zk. So f of ck delta zk and k varies from 1 to n since there are n partitions of this curve. Okay, so we get this uh, uh, kind of sum uh, that depends on the partition pn, and this is going to be equal to this summation. Okay. As I've told you that this depends on the partition and there is n involved in the notation. Okay, So you can see that in the notation there is n involved. So this n is kind of uh, a variable. So if we increase uh, the values of n then uh, of course we will be getting different values of spn. So we can uh, just say that it is a kind of sequence. So for each value of the integer we can evaluate this uh, Summation. So we can calculate what is sp1. Of course, it doesn't make any sense because uh, uh, it has to be more than. Okay, so uh, so sp1 uh, means n is equal to 
uh, one so it is already there so sp2 sp3 and up to so on for these values of integers we will be getting this values and so it is a kind of sequence okay so um, we can talk about the limit of the sequence then okay so let's assume uh, that the limit of the sequence exists and let's call it l so limit n approaches to infinity spn is equal to l and once again uh, this is just one particular partition pn and uh, uh, we assumed that uh, uh, this limit corresponding to this particular partition p exists okay so corresponding to this partition we have a sequence and for that sequence we have the limit which exists and it is equal to l okay so the value of l depends on the partition chosen now the next question would be what if we change the partition of course uh, answer uh, technically speaking answer might be different but if we impose another condition that for every partition of this contour we are getting the same answer then we say that the integration of this f of z along this contour c is basically limit n approaches to infinity k is equal to 1 to n f of c k delta z k and uh, if uh, the value of this uh, limit is same for every partition so we can just take one particular partition and we can evaluate this value well uh, this is a kind of uh, difficult task so uh, so far what we have achieved is that uh, the integration of f of z along the contour c is basically the limit uh, n approaches to infinity k is equal to 1 to n f of c k delta z k and of course there are some assumptions so the first assumption is uh, the existence of this limit and the second assumption is that we get the same value the same limit for each and every partition of this contour c so under these two assumptions we define uh, the following uh, uh, way of complex integral of a complex valued function f of z along the contour c now um, as i've told you earlier it's a very complicated way so the next question would be is there any way of simplifying uh, this uh, way of defining uh, integral of a complex valued function okay now the, our next task is to simplify this uh, uh, notation or simplify this way of defining so as uh, we know from the definition of the curve that if we are given a curve then uh, the points of the curve are obtained from the points of a uh, interval on the real line so let's say uh, this is the real interval a to b and uh, this z1 is image of t1 z2 is image of t2 zk minus 1 is image of t minus k zk is image of tk zn minus 1 is image of tn minus 1 and at the end b is image of tn and of course there are some uh, points in these intervals as well so let's say c1 is an image of t, uh, tau1 c2 is image of tau2 ck is image of tau k and cn is image of t tau n so we have uh, basically created a partition of this real interval a b in the sense that the first point a is going to a the second point t1 is going to z1 and of course the midpoint uh, basically any point in between them tau1 is going to c1 and tau2 is going to c2 t2 is going to z2 okay so up to so on so that's how we partitioned this real interval a b in the following way so uh, that's uh, that's how we defined uh, so far uh, the complex integral okay so this is basically the integral a to b okay so uh, integral z f of z along this contour c so that's how we defined it okay so f of c k delta z k which is equal to limit and approaches to infinity f of c k z k minus z k minus 1 now uh, this c k okay so this uh, c k is basically the image of tau k from this uh, real interval a b okay so we can just say that c k is basically z of tau k because c1 is image of tau1 c2 is image of tau2 c uh, c k is image of tau k c n is image of tau n uh, so that's why this is true and similarly 
let's see what is zk so any uh, zk is basically image of a z of the values t k because z1 is image of t1 z0 is image of uh, basically uh, a z2 is image of t2 and up to so on so basically this a is uh, t0 and this b is tn okay so um, that's uh, what we get from this interpretation okay now let's use these values ck and zk in this uh, notation and what do we get so we get f of z of tau k z of tk and z of tk minus 1 now let's simplify uh, this notation if we multiply and divide uh, this uh, uh, term with the tk minus tk minus 1 okay so that's yeah, and if we cancel out these two then we will exactly get the same uh, term so if we multiply and divide this thing then we get this expression now this is the important step of this whole interpretation over here we are taking the limit and approaches to infinity and uh, in this uh, summation we have three terms okay so the first term is this one the second term is this one and third term is a kind of special and uh, uh, separates us from uh, separate this term from the other two terms so why this term is important so this term is important because when n approaches to infinity then uh, the points zn and zn minus 1 so they get closer and closer to each other so in this case uh, the point z of tk minus 1 which is basically z k minus 1 is getting closer and closer to z k which is z of tk so when n approaches to infinity they are getting closer and closer to each other so in other words we can say that z k minus 1 approaches to z k and uh, when or in other words we can say that when n approaches to infinity t k minus 1 approaches to t k okay so we can say that this is the same as saying t k minus 1 approaches to t k z of t k okay z of t k minus z of t k minus 1 over t k minus t k minus 1 and uh, from our uh, knowledge of real valued functions uh, this is the same as the derivative of z with respect to the parameter t okay and this is nothing but just the integral of f of z of t okay so what do we get then this is basically f of z of t and this becomes z prime of t okay so uh, that's uh, what we uh, get so in other words eventually if we want to calculate this complex integral f of z uh, along this contour c and uh, this is the same as calculating a to b f of z of t z prime of t dt now the point is uh, the calculations or uh, the mathematical steps that we did so far is not the proof of this uh, uh, theorem which, which suggests us how to calculate this complex integral so uh, because uh, we haven't checked or we haven't proved that we get the same answer for each and every partition because uh, this calculation depends on the partition pn and we should prove that for each and every partition we get the same answer and if we get the same answer for every partition then only we will be able to say that this is true so uh, the point is uh, these kind of calculations are beyond the scope of this course and uh, they comes uh, they, they we need some uh, advanced uh, techniques for this for example we need riemann stelages integrals and uh, other things so um, uh, we are leaving uh, this thing for this course and uh, maybe if you are interested then you can read some uh, books for example uh, some advanced books on complex analysis that contain these proofs now we are allowed to choose any parameterization of the contour as we want because uh, uh, once again apart from depending on the uh, partition it depends on the parameterization of the path as well okay so once again we should get the same answer for each and every parameterization of the path so that's why uh, if uh, this integral is equal to this thing then it is the same answer for each and every 
partition as well as this each and every uh, parameterization of the contour so if we want to evaluate this thing so um, we can choose any parameterization as we want and this is uh, kind of taken care of in the proof of this theorem so uh, the above integral involves integrating complex functions over real interval so what is the real interval a to b okay so we we are calculating a complex function of course z prime of t is a complex function f of z of t is a complex function and uh, so overall it's a complex function and we want to evaluate it on the real interval a b so now our next task is try to see how do we evaluate a complex uh, function over a real interval for example closed interval a to b so this is uh, the end of this module so in this uh, uh, discussion uh, we saw how we can generalize the concept of uh, riemann sums and uh, the definition of real integrals from real analysis to the complex integration and we kind of try to convince ourselves that uh, this is the right way of calculating uh, the complex integrals now to understand these complex integrals we want to understand how to integrate a complex function on the real interval a to b so the next discussion would be focused on this thing so given a complex valued function uh, of one variable of course and how do we integrate it over the real interval a to b